everybody, Panzer Penguin here, back with some Rome 2 Total War. Um, the initial three videos I posted are being scrapped because attacking Syracuse first brought me into a war with Carthage that I could not win. Um, I had my one army down here and they brought two full stacks over. Um, at the same time, the Venetians in the north attacked me uh, along with the Genoans, so... Uh, there was no coming back from that. Well, I am now, I don't know how many turns into this particular game. But as you can see, my economy is doing rather well. Uh, if we take a look at the strategic map, we can see that I have taken the northern three settlements and then two additional ones to the north. Um, so I'll wrap up what has happened so far. Um, this time around, instead of going into Sicily, I just decided to deal with the Genoans and the uh, Venetians first. So I moved my army up here. I built it up a little bit and then ended up um, attacking the Venetians um, while they were not too strong. Uh, so I took Petavium first and I was hoping for the Genoans, as we'll call them, they were technically the Ligurians and the Inserbis or something that owned Medellin. Um, they went to war and the Inserbi and Sudbury, I don't know how to pronounce them, their army got caught on this side of the river over here. They uh, attacked Genoa and for some reason retreated around so they got stuck so every time they tried to get home they come in range of the Genoans again and, and fight. Uh, so I moved my spy up to Medlin and found it unoccupied, so uh, I just marched in and took that. Um, took a few losses because it's a, a walled city. And uh, uh, at which point I think Carthage declared war on me. So I don't think we actually ever th fought. Um, you can see I'm not at war with anyone right now. Uh, so I think we made a white piece because nothing was going on there. But um, every time I prepared to attack the Ligurians, um, somebody else would attack me. Uh, first, it was the people who owned Coria, um, the Raiti, Raiti or something, uh, and I just absolutely crushed them. Um, and then when I was gearing up once more to attack Liguria, uh, the Helveti attacked, and they had two full stack armies, so they were bit more of a fight and basically my armies were decimated. Um, I think collectively I had maybe ten full units between my the two armies I had built. Um, at which point the Ligurians decided to stab me in the back and they marched on Eretium and took Eretium from me. Um, I then played a little cat and mouse game where uh, I was trying to build up my armies. You know, thank God I was making not quite as much money as I am right now, but I was making, you know, two or three grand a turn. Um, so I was able to march an army onto Gen Genua, uh, because their army was in Eretium. And then, after I took Genua, um, I basically used my army, um, from Genua, uh, as you can see where he is standing right now. This is pretty much right after the Ligurians. Um, though it looks like I have finally got the... Uh, graphic mod I've been trying to run work, but we'll see the, for sure if, when we go into battle. So I moved him here and I had him fortify. Um, I don't think he's close enough to the bridge to have done a bridge battle, but then I had my second army recruiting units in Arminium, uh, or Ar Arminium, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I figured Rome was pretty safe because if we look at Rome, it has a garrison of almost 20 units in the first place. Um, and I was moving this army that is now in Rome up. Um, as you can see also, I've had a reform happen, so I'm uh, in the process of upgrading my units. Um, I think one more reform and they essentially become the Roman army that we all are familiar with. Um, so a few things to go over real quick. I have a champion who can train my army. Now he's part of the army. He'll train them each turn, and that should get these relatively new recruits some experience. Uh, my main army here, well, I have some of them are old, some of them are new. 
Um, you can see, though, that I have two odd units here, uh, the Hoplite and the... Uh, the well, we'll just call them Axemen. Um, they don't hold up, the Axemen don't hold up too well in frontline combat, but if I use them in a flanking move, they seem to do okay. Um, ironically, they are Ligurian, uh, you know, from the Northwest region, um, and they are a unit I can recruit. I did upgrade my main military barrack in Rome. Up. It's now level 2. So if we see here on our recruitment screen, um, and another thing you may notice is this sh sword and shield uh, symbol. Um, so these flags also represent the area of recruitment of these units. So these are units I can recruit in Italia, uh, and they could be specific to Italia. Um, as you can see, slingers have uh, disappeared for some reason. I'm not quite sure why, actually. But I do have uh, the V-Light, I don't know, Vilities. Vilities, I don't know how to pronounce them. Uh, once again, my pronunciation on things is uh, pretty terrible. Um, but they throw javelins. If you see their missile damage is 31 as opposed to 16, so they do twice as much damage. Uh, but they don't have nearly as much uh, range or uh, ammunition. You know, they only have seven javelins, essentially, as opposed to 26 stones. Um, there is a mod out there, I would have to look it up, that allows your uh, missile troops to, once they run out of ammunition, they can basically scavenge the countryside for more. Um, I think with slingers, that's like finding rocks to throw. Uh, I'm not sure if it applies to archers on javelins. Um, we also have a political thing going on. Members of a strange new cult have been caught desecrating Temple of the Gods. What we'd like to do with these godless monsters. Um, we either can do a public spectacle or we can offer them to the gods. I know that if I offer them to the gods, we basically lock them in the room and then the servants who go in the day later find them just absolutely massacred and they're scarred for life because of what the gods did to them. So this time we'll go with a public spectacle and uh, see what happens. Uh, again, this on the left is the important people and generals. Um, I'm now up to 47% control of the Senate. Um, which is pretty good. Uh, but I don't have to worry about the Civil War, so I should be okay. So right now, the uh, my armies are recovering. I'm making enough money now that I can probably add... Um, The Treariai go away. I think I need another the Treariai. So they're a bit more expensive, um, but they are quite a good unit as well. Come fight for Rome. So this is our main army, so we'll add them there. While our secondary army needs to recover still. Um, so while he does that, uh, he's out of moves. Um, this guy here. Uh, since he's not facing us, he is a diplomat, or a uh, governor, I should say, uh, and basically I have him operating in this province, the northernmost one, uh, which is Venetia and Histria. Not sure what Histria is, but sure. So he affects the public order and income and everything there. Um, if we, oh, wrong button, if we look at him, you can see he's been upgraded a few times, so he, uh, has some good bonuses to the region. Um, so going back to the sword and shield icon, I'm going to keep these videos, uh, small. I have five or six videos I need to upload, but they're so freaking huge, uh, because they're all like half an hour to 45 minutes five minutes so I'm going to try and keep these videos either to either just the battle video or the summary like this video um, so I apologize for not showing you everything that's going on it's just the only feasible way of doing it right now for me um, so the sword and shield is because uh, the benefit of taking Coria as you can see is the iron that comes here so that then applies to all my units no matter where I build them 
um, which is great. And I believe um, you may have noticed also the cavalry unit, at least this one, has a horseshoe. So his the cavalry uh, have also been upgraded. Um, and that is because, it, even though it doesn't show it, I believe it was when I took Octodoron that a... Uh, um, what's the term I'm looking for? That the uh, upgrade was available for the cavalry. So I believe there's a war horse somewhere in Octodoron. But I can't figure it out. It's either from that or from a trade or something. But um, I really have no idea. Um, so my next goal, and we can see that it's empty right now, is to take Noria. Um, mostly because... Um, that is the third province, as we see, of this outer rim uh, of the Alps. Um, so once I take that, I'll, I'll own the entire province, which will be good, many benefits. And then uh, I think I'm going to move into the rich lands of Greece. Um, let's straighten my view out. Um, so move, move east. You can see there are some supplies that we can already see from these cities that we've discovered. Um, so my part of the reason my economy is going good, as you can see I have a trade with Carthage ironically, is that I was able to secure a trade route with um, one of the factions I had encountered. Forget how I had encountered them, um, but I believe it may have been Cyprus over here. Um, but because that trade route extended through territory I had not encountered. Um, it then let me meet these other factions who um, would then let me uh, trade with them. Um, the, which then expanded and let me meet other people and trade with them, which expand, you know, so on and so forth. So the East is pretty well discovered apart from the uh, Seleucid Empire and the Egyptians, which are down there two big ones, but that will be a conflict for another day. Um, so I apologize for not making this a rogue choice uh, campaign anymore. There's just too many variables, really, and our initial plan just went so horribly wrong I had to restart and take a different approach. Um, I think that once I take Noria, I um, could potentially certainly take Syracuse uh, and break my trade agreement with Syracuse. I mean, it doesn't really look like they have anything going on down there. Um, eh, and uh, Syracuse is apparently at war with just about everybody. Uh, so these are all undiscovered factions. Uh, I don't know why they're at war with everybody. Or told we're pretty neutral with them. Oh, but they, uh. They're Satrapy of Carthage. So, there was, a uh, Carthage and Syracuse to go to war early on, uh, as always. And then a peace deal was reached, but I did not realize that they had agreed to become a Satrapy. So, I don't know if that's like, uh. Yeah, I don't really know if. Attacking Syracuse will mean I go to war against uh, Carthage or not. Let's see. I click on them. Be welcome. If I can give you a fair answer, you will have it. Um, so I guess if I want to take Syracuse, it's going to be a war with Carthage. Um, so I may... I may do my Greek expansion first so that I can have, you know, maybe four four or five armies full strength. Um, that way I can um, basically keep two of them and, you know, one up in northern Italy and one in Greece for any problems that may arise there. Well, having at least two to uh, come down to Sicily and deal with things there. And I'll, I'll probably also... Um, Build my navy. I've added. I've already added two assault troops. To my navy, which I used actually against the Ligurians who had set their navy down. Um, so, 
I'm going to end this video here. Hopefully it's not too long or too boring. Uh, and I'll come back with some... Uh, well, let's, uh, let's end the turn and see what happened from that uh, little decision I made about making an example out of those cultists. Um, as you can see, the trade, because I have actual little civilian merchants traveling, I can kind of see movement around the trade uh, routes, even though technically it probably be, you know, a few days <laughs> to, a, to a month old by the time it actually make it back to Rome. But, you know, it doesn't, this game doesn't do things like that. So once again, at the top of the screen, you see all the symbols of all the other factions and their turns going on. Uh, looks like the Greeks, some of these Greek uh, and Thracians. Um, so no, this is not me being attacked. This is a the Sukrini who are actually pretty friendly with me, attacking the uh, rebel group that is formed in the territory. Um, this little dog animal face is that of the Helvetii, so they're Helvetii rebels. As we can see. Um, the AI is also recruiting area of recruitment units. They have a nice little diverse army. Um, uh, these guys actually have a lot of cavalry in there. Oh, this is the Massilian army here. They must be in the region as well. And then this is my uh, uh, home guard my uh, from the village here. So we're actually going to decline this attack. And they've done it themselves. Um, I didn't want my... ranked up so the cultists were crucified people got out of the pen of stones their <laughs> deaths were slow and painful such was the will of God so now I'm favored by the gods for two turns which plus three growth a turn plus ten percent wealth from agriculture uh, which is good because this turn is a summer turn so I theoretically um, probably gonna save this I'm gonna make at least one of these a farm this region needs a farm. This was originally going to be my uh, farm region, but uh, didn't work out quite that way. Um, so as you see here now, because I, I just noticed I have an auxiliary camp. Um, well, I can't recruit any Roman units. I can recruit all the auxiliary. So all the basically these were the types of people I was fighting recently. Um, so I will buy the war dogs because, man, are they awesome. You uh, set these dogs loose and... On unarmored barbarians, especially, they're quite good. Um, so these are Ligurian uh, cavalry. They could be useful as well. Let's go with one of them. Uh, tribes from the Alps. They're swordsmen, so they could be good as well. I mean, my swordsmen, since I am now armed with the Gladius, I believe. Uh, see, my weapon Delius is at 1. Um, I don't quite understand what that actually means, to be honest. I mean, you'd think all weapons are deadly, but it means I think I just murderize people. Uh, so these do 23, 63. These guys, so they're not... So they do as much attack, but they're not as good at defending. So their charge bonus, 26... Slightly more weapon damage. Yeah, I mean, I. It's better just to go with more Hastati. Um, nothing really that I need out of that group. Plus, I want to save money for the slums I'm clearing. So I can build additional. Um, farms. Alright, so we'll end this video here, and I'll come back in a bit with uh, uh, either some combat or another update on my progress. Uh, I think this is going to be the best way going forward, is to make videos short and sweet, unless they're battle.